Hello, folks. Welcome back to Ferox Strike Reviews. Well, this is it, folks. I'm actually getting close to the 300. The big three. Oh, 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 yes. Am I getting mellow or something? Or am I just going to lose my touch? Or am I going to do movies I haven't actually touched yet? I got lots of movies and some TV shows I haven't actually touched yet. So maybe eventually I'll get around to it. So. I just want to get to the 300. Yeah, I got, I'm got. i like 10 episodes away from it. <sighs> the big three, double O. Can't wait. Anyway, I also want to say, may the fourth be with you, and the revenge of the fifth. Happy Star Wars weekend, and also happy Cinco de Mayo. No, seriously, I mean, who, who the hell would have figured that that was actually going to happen on the same day? I mean, the second Star Wars, I mean, technically we have a Star Wars weekend, and the second day of the weekend is actually Cinco de Mayo Day. Yeah, it's a Latino holiday. What do we figure? Hey, good food, though, I'm not going to lie. And also, Saturday, well, not only was it Star Wars Saturday, but it was also <laughs> free comic book day. Yes. I show you what comic books I got, but unfortunately, I um, they're in my room. And uh, I had to hide them from uh, Evil Joe. Yeah, he's kind of a... Yeah, he's getting into my comics now. So, what film am I going to review today? Well, last week I, last week I looked at all the Nightmare on Elm Street films. And I figured it was time for me to talk about a movie that I only made a brief mention to in my first film review ever. Yes. Over 290 episodes ago, I talked about the movie Kickboxer. and explain how that film had nothing to do with kickboxing or the martial arts style of Muay Thai. But today's film does. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to look at Amba, the Thai warrior. Or the Muay Thai warrior, if, going by the international title. Yeah, I always hate when there's always like an alternate title to these damn things. But yeah, this is Amba, the Thai warrior. The first Tony Shaw film I'm reviewing, and it's almost 300 episodes in. Better late than ever, I say. Yeah, better late than ever. Where to begin with this film? Where where to begin with this movie? Well, for one thing, this movie is pretty awesome, actually. According to this, uh, all of it was made uh, way back in 2003, but it wasn't brought over here until 2005. Kind of weird, don't you think? But, to be fair, this was around the time when they were trying to do, like, less wire work and trying to make it, everything as realistic as possible with some crazy-ass stunts and all. There's a lot of crazy stunts in this movie. Like, a, a lot. Like, legit, a lot. The movie stars Tony Ja as a village war- as a village boy- yeah, as a village warrior by the name of Ting, who was taught the, the ancient art of Muay Thai. Now, here's the thing. I should mention that you do know for a fact that I did Muay Thai training back about over 10 years ago, right? Actually, it was about 13 years ago. Nowadays, I'm doing it again, but I'm doing, like, self-training going back into shape. So, I'm doing it again, and uh, the thing is, my Muay Thai teacher said that everything that was in this movie wasn't exactly Muay Thai related. Well, it's both true and false, because... What I was doing was traditional sport Muay Thai, you know, combat, you know, combat stuff, uh, like stuff you see in the ring or on the street. This film uh, uses the older version of Muay Thai, which is like Muay Baran, and it also uses the weapon system of Krabby Kerba. So yeah, it's like the old variants of Muay Thai with elements of the modern version of Muay Thai mixed into it, though. So the movie basically starts with, like, a bunch of guys trying to go up a tree to catch a flat. They're all covered in mud, and it's kind of ridiculous. 
and looks relatively kind of silly and relatively dangerous. But one war, but one young man actually grabs the flag and uh, jumps all the way down. That man happens to be Ting. Yes, the character's name is Tang. Hmm. So yeah, the character's name is Tang, played by Tony Jaa. And they're doing a ceremony for the for the deity Ambak. And a gangster by the name of Don comes in, and you are gonna hate this character a lot, ladies and gentlemen, because this guy all he wants to do is steal and buy artifacts, sell them for the highest bidder, and sell drugs. He's an asshole. In fact, I should mention it's because of this guy. A lot of bad things happen to the bad guys. Like, not even joking. Like, seriously. Okay, seriously. Because of this guy's dumb... Uh, this guy's biggest fuck-up. This dumb fuck. Um, all this happened because of this dumb fuck, okay? So, anyway. One of the village chiefs actually said he wasn't going to... wanted him to show him a man... An amulet, uh, and uh, Don was actually going to put you know, putting a price on it, though. But the village elders told him he wasn't going to sell it, and, and he had no intention of selling. It. He told him he just wanted him to look at it, but I didn't tell you not to sell. I was going to sell it. So what does he do later on that night? He steals Ombok's head uh, for revenge. Yeah, that was a big fucking dumb move. That was a dumb fucking move ever. Because, okay, here's a fun fact. King is a young warrior who lives in the village, and the village one of the village elders, the monk, is a revered Muay Thai master, and he has taught him the ancient uh, version of Muay Thai, and it's a relatively very dangerous style. Yeah, this is not going to end well. No, nope, that's all. So the village elders actually give Ting enough money uh, money to actually help him to go to the Bangkok to actually find Ambok's head. And the village, uh, and of course, the village elder tells him to uh, take a look for his son, uh, Hung Lee, huh, who's in Bangkok doing some business. Huh. And maybe he can help him. Huh. Well, uh, he goes, to, well, we go down to Bangkok. We see Hung Lee going by the name of George, amongst all things. And he's kind of a street gang. He's kind of a street thug. Gee, didn't see that one coming. And his partner is a young woman by the name of Moy. Boy, boy, Thai. No, her name. I don't even know what the hell her last name is. No, seriously, I don't even know if this was a joke or not. But to be fair, I had the uh, subtitles on because uh, the, the Thai subtitles on that way you actually hear what they were saying in th in Thai. But um, hmm. her name is pronounced Moy in both versions. You know, Moy as in Moy Thai, spelled the exact same way as in M U A Y. Um, okay, it's kind of like saying you have a character by the name of Kung, and, oh yeah, Kung Lee from, uh, oh yeah, there was, a uh, Kung Lao from, uh, Mortal Kombat, and Kung Lee from Street Fighter. You need to change those fucking names, so, seriously. So, it turns out that she's a little hust. so it turns out Mui is actually a hustler, and also a college student, too. So she's actually doing classes and shit. And she's doing the hustle so she, she can pay for the classes. And, of course, Ting meets up with George. And George tells him to get lost. He doesn't even know who the hell this guy is. Until he sees that Ting has money, he takes the Ting to his apartment. And George takes the money and goes off to, spend, to make an investment with the money. Like an asshole. Ting actually follows him. And keep this in mind, Ting is looking for Don the entire time. Don actually coincidentally goes to the same club as George does. George goes to a fight club, which is at a bar, and uh, he bets money on one on like this one fighter who winds up losing. And Don actually goes to the big boss, which I'm going to call Big Boss, because I can't even pronounce how his name is spelled. Seriously. And his right-hand man is a Burmese boxer by the name of Sa Ming. He's another asshole, too. Anyway, uh, the boss doesn't give a shit about the whole um, Bach head. He tells him to get uh, to get lost, uh, and he'll take his, and he'll put the head in his collection somewhere or something. Anyway, 
the big boss and this other gangster are actually be- doing bets on the fights. Uh, Ting comes right in. He go- he grabs. Jo- Here's the thing: the second Ting go comes in, Don Lee leaves at the very same time. It's like it's like this: Ting, Don, and on the wall. Just missed them. Fuck. We could have saved the whole movie. Anyway, uh, Ting actually goes and confronts George and tells him where the hell he asks where the villager's money is. And while George tells him it's over there by the uh, by the betting post, uh, yeah. And here's the thing: Ting walks right into the middle of the arena, uh, like right in the middle of the fight area, not even realizing he just walked into the fight area. Huh. And uh, the arena anou- and the announcer was going, "Who wants to fight this man? Who wants to fight this man?" Ting walks up. We have a challenger! <laughs> and Ting doesn't want to fight at all. He just wants the damn cash. <laughs> he just wants the villagers' cash so he can get the hell out of there. All right? And, of course, uh, the big boss and the, uh, makes a wager saying that Ting's going to get his ass kicked. Uh, so, and Mui comes along and she says, Up, oh, say goodbye. Oh, your pants in big trouble, isn't he? Yeah, say goodbye to Ting. And what happens to the... F- and what happens? Oh, um... Yeah, the fight starts and it's over in two seconds because Ting just knocks. Uh, he just does a roundhouse. He just a roundhouse knee to the guy's head and that's it. The guy's out, literally. Like he just does like the, like here's how his knee. Like here's how his legs work. Bong. He just he just bong. That's what he did. He used his knee and knocked the guy out. Not even two seconds. The fight barely lasted two seconds. I was like bong. Fastest knockout ever. Yeah. Everyone's like, what the fuck just happened? Uh, yeah. You're the big boss, right? Yeah, I'm the big boss. Guy, sm- guy has a bad sm- smoking problem. Hence, he has a little voice box. So, yeah, I'm the big boss. Yeah, uh, the unbox head that jackass Don just sent you. Yeah, give it to this guy. Why the fuck should I do that, dude? Listen to me. Give it to this guy. If you do, he's gonna fuck up your operation. Just this guy and then just throw it in. All right. You stout. You have hundreds of million dollars in your business, right? Yeah, just give him the head, and we can all walk away for scot free. Okay, just do that. All right, don't make any bets against this guy at all. Just give him the head and call it a day. All right, Take your losses on your fight on this fight, and just go and just get on the fucking head. No, you're fucked. Okay, you're fucked. <laughs> Yeah, so rather than taking the prize money, he just goes over there and gets the money he had, that George stole from him, and he tells George to go to hell. And rather than sleep, staying at George's place, he goes to a monastery and sleeps over at the monastery. So George basically does this whole thing, working as a stick, working as a gambler, working as a card player. He owes money to a lot of people, just to several people, including a couple of drug guys. Hmm. Couple of drug guys, and Ting just wanders around Thailand looking for Don. And of course, George and Mo- uh, George and Moy continue their st- continue their little scam operation, which goes somewhat well until they ca- until the uh, gangsters catch on. And then, like, uh, okay, they start beating up George, and Moy gets beat up at the also gets assaulted at the same time. Ting relatively ignores it until Moy gets assaulted. Then he comes in and helps them. Yeah. And then the other gangsters start coming in, and uh, a giant chase scene ensues. Yeah, uh, just a chase. And this is where most of the movie's budget kind of went into. Yeah, the fight scenes and the chase scenes. There's a lot of chases in this movie. Where Tony Shaw does all of his own stunts. Yeah, seriously, he does a lot of parkour stunts. It's crazy. He fights some of the guys off, and he continues doing parkour stunts. Kind of like what Jackie Chan does, but not as funny. Though, there is something really kind of funny that happens to George. I mean, he does, uh... I mean, the gangsters do catch up to him until he grabs a little a skewing knife. He's like, I'll cut you! Throws it away and just grabs it and back and gets a big-ass cleaver and goes, I'm gonna fucking cut you guys up. Get the fuck away from me. The guy's like, shit. You mean business. See an old woman walking by going, nice for sale! She just walks right between them going, nice for sale! Nice for sale! And the next scene is George running away from all of them with knives. 
it's it's oh god it's comedy gold <clears throat> eventually Moy got, got gets away from them and while Ting, Ting and George actually do meet up again Ting actually relatively gets away easily until George convinces Ting he can help him look for Don because he doesn't want to get his ass kicked Ting is hesitant for us is like fine come here let's go find this asshole Don so they go back to the fight club, and here's the thing. George didn't actually bring him to the fight club to actually bet money on him. Uh, bet money on him to fight. No, he actually brought him here because this is where Don usually sells his drugs. Actually, that's kind of, actually now that I think about that, kind of makes sense why he would do that. Yeah. Go figure, right? You know what? When he gets to the club, something stupid actually happens. The Don is... I mean, well, one, Don's not there at all, but George and Moy are asking everybody if they've seen Don. They haven't actually seen him at all. So, the big boss is still there, and Saming actually happens to notice that Ting came back. Most of the crowd knows that Ting came back, but he's not there to fight. And there's a fighter in the actually in the pit called Big Bear, who's actually been beating people up recently, and he actually starts to assault a girl, huh? And one of the waiters, actually, who's Thai, actually wants to uh, decides to fight Big Bear. And he gets his ass handed to him. George, and the thing is, he's just trying to provoke Ting to fight. All it did was piss Ting off, and George convinces Ting that he has to beat the shit out of this motherfucker. Because he's being disrespectful, and he's beating up a Thai person for no apparent reason. So Ting swallows his pride, and he fights uh, Big Bear. And Big Bear does a very stupid thing. He flips off a uh, thing and says, Come on! Fuck Muay Thai! Uh, and he gets knocked down in like less than two seconds again. But he does get right back up. <laughs> anyway, King beats the living shit out of uh, Big Bear and knocks him the fuck out. So, anyway, he decides to leave the pit, but nobody wants to make him leave the pit because, surprise, surprise, another fighter shows up. While this is all happening, the big boss is actually betting against Tang, and he's losing lots of money because he's betting against Tang like a dumbass. Seriously, why do criminal lore? I mean, why do criminals usually do so stupid shit like this? Okay, Eric. I mean, seriously, there's a fight club in the movie, and they're betting against the hero, and the hero is kicking ass. Dude, you're gonna lose a shitload of money. Are you fucking stupid? The answer is yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are that fucking stupid. So this guy just... So this other fighter does dance fighting or something. Like a disco fight. And, um... Yeah. Ting fucks him up real easily. Like, he just beats the shit out of him. And then this other fighter called Mad Dog, who is just by far the most craziest fighter in the ring, he... They throw down and they almost destroy the bar. Like, legit, almost destroy the bar. In fact... <laughs> I should mention, while this is happening, George is actually betting money on Tang. As, actually putting money on Tang if he wins everything. And, uh, yeah, um, he's winning a lot. And the fight between him and Mad Dog goes all the way up to the to the room where the boss is, to where the big boss is and the other mobster. And Saming actually kicks, kicks Ting in the face for no apparent reason to try to distract him. And the big boss gives, the, gives Mad Dog a knife to cut Ting up. What? That doesn't work, because Ting just uh, throw, kicks the knife away, and gr he gets him in the Muay Thai clinch, and needs the shit out of him. What do we need the flipping crap out of him? Like, his ch like his chest has to be nothing more but a blood, it's nothing more but mince meat at this point. Throws him out the window, and he comes, and he flies out after him, and knees him in the chest as they fall out the window. You know, it's just really, it's just astonishing to know how stupid criminals are in these movies. It's just really, really astonishing how stupid these fucking criminals are. They think, oh yeah, the scooting beat, come on, kill this motherfucker. It's like, dude, you do realize that you're losing money on this guy, right? Why not just bet on this guy? Are you that fucking stupid? Oh, yeah, that's right, you are. You are fucking stupid. Oh, sweet Jesus. 
Oh, well, either way, it doesn't really matter because the cops later on, and when the crowd actually gets the approval of uh, Ting, and the cops later raid the place. Uh, Donald actually does come in, though, but he actually wants up leaving, but, uh, t but the thing is, George actually grabs Ting and tells him to forget about Don right now because he knows where he lives, uh, and so they leave. So of course they do. And they get up, uh, so they eat, and so they go someplace to eat and make a plan. The next day we see Don actually pimping on one of his girls. Yeah, it's a very uncomfortable sequence with this girl, but she's actually also a drug mule, and he actually physically assaults her and then actually and makes her choke on her own drugs, uh, the, the drugs that she was carrying. Until Ting and George come in, and uh, Ting beats the shit out of him, but not that much, because George happened to notice that the girl was actually ODing at the time. So they call the cops, but the thing is, but the problem is, fucking Don leaves, and Ting goes after John, and George goes after Ting. Not, okay, the sad thing is, okay, to be fair, I wouldn't put too much interest in the girl. She does die from an overdose, and Moy actually knew the girl, so she's upset about it. And we get another chase sequence with the uh, with a bunch of uh, Thai taxi cabs this time around. It is surprisingly a very dangerous stunt sequence. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, they actually used real like those real little cabby things uh, that are actually like a mix between a bike and a cart. Yeah, those uh, that stunt sequence is actually kind of dangerous. And uh, oh god, Don makes another fuck up. He fucks up one again. He goes to the main dock area where his boss actually keeps some. Um, valuable stuff, and Ting chases him all the way out there until he crashes it into the river. Now, Ting actually tries to choke Don out until he gets distracted. Don swims away, and Ting sees a bunch of Thai statues, a bunch of Thai memorabilia from Buddhist temples, stuff that was reported missing. So, yeah. And the, and the big boss had played millions of dollars to get that shit stored there, and he's going to get millions more to actually have it shipped away. Yeah. So T Ting gets out of the water. The George picks him up. And the police come right by. And they discover the whole loot. And yeah. Big Boss has lost hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, what they do with Don? The Big Boss actually has Don beating the living shit out of. Yeah, seriously. Like, uh, he... Uh, no, seriously. Like, it's actually... It's really amazing to know that this guy, Don, fucked up so badly to the point he's basically ruining his boss's organization. All because of stealing a Buddhist head. Yeah. This dumb fuck sunk the guy's operation. How many movies do you know where we have dumb fucks that are like that? This guy's unbelievably stupid. Anyway, the boss asks why those guys were after him, and he says because they were looking for the unbox stat, the unbox head that he had stole. Now, of course, the boss doesn't remember who the unbox was because he doesn't give a shit about this stuff. It, to him, money is all that matters. So, uh, then he tells him exactly what he did. Uh, Don tells him exactly what he did, and then the boss calls him a dumb fuck, which is what I've been calling him. Seriously, he says it in both English and Thai, so it's like, yeah, this guy's a dumb fuck. So he knows where those guys are, and he has, and decides to make a deal with them. So they kidnap George and Moy, but they hold on to Moy and tell George to, uh, to tell Ting they want to have one more fight with Ting. This time against Saming. So they go to the border, and they do a rope fist fight. This is the sequence I was talking about in the uh, Kickboxer review. So, they do, but the thing is, they both have different rope fist fighting styles. You know, because Samang knows Lith Wei, the Burmese fighting system. And here's something that's really fucked up about Lith Wei. Uh, I mean, this is really fucked up, but then again, this is a traditional martial arts system from that area. But Lith Wei actually uses hands, elbows, knees, and leg and feet and their head. They have a ton of headbutt techniques. And here's a sh here's a bit of a fun fact: if a fighter gets knocked out, they have I'm not kidding about this. Five, not shitting around. I'm being fucking serious. Five minutes to get up. All right. 
if they get up after around that point in time, they have the option to continue the fight. Yeah, not even kidding. And you know what's even more it's even more crazy? The King of Lith Way is a guy from Canada. Yeah, there's a Canadian fighter who lives in Myanmar right now who's called the King of Lith Way. He's undefeated. Not even joking. Look him up. Anyway, Ting is going to do his do his Muay Thai style against uh, Saming, but uh, Saming has a little extra thing up his sleeve. He has an in a syringe full of steroids, injects himself in the chest, and they fight. So now, um, here's the thing: it turns out George had made a bet uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the big boss saying that uh, Ting would actually lose the fight; that he'll throw the fight. All right, Ting will actually fight to the death, and he said he'll make it look good, but there's a slight problem. Saming actually went overboard, goes overboard here. Seriously, even on the steroids, he goes completely overboard. Now, this is the English now, this is the English Cup version that came over here in the United States. Supposedly in the extended supposedly in the Thai version, there's actually a scene where uh, t where uh, George actually tells him about uh, tells him about, like, he has to throw the fight or else uh, Moe's not, they're gonna let Moe die or something. I don't know if that's true or not. That's supposedly in the International Cup version. But either way, Saming and Ting actually do fight, and Saming is just absorbing the blows, and he goes completely batshit crazy and throws Ting out of the ring and almost and almost kills him. So the boss agrees to meet up. So yeah, Ting loses the fight, and the boss agrees to meet up with them. And he gives him the box on box head. The box is empty because he doesn't give a shit. So, yeah, he goes back on the deal. He doesn't give a shit because thanks to these guys, they ruined his business. Like, dude, you want to know who ruins your business? Don. Don brought them over here. You should shoot him. Are you fucking... You know what? Forget it. I'm out of here. No, fuck you. You're an idiot. You're going to lose everything. You're a fucking idiot. I'm out. Just saying. So, yeah. Don is actually going to make sure these guys get... Make sure that Moy, Tang, and George get executed. So the uh, so the big boss, uh, along with Samang and his men, go off to the other side of the mountain to a cave uh, where they're going to excavate a Buddha. Uh, they're going to excavate some more artifacts illegally, of course. And of course, Ting and the and of course Ting, George, and Moy actually do wind up escaping. And Ting beats the living fuck out of all these guys using Muay Thai. In fact, there's a sequence where his legs, where his shins are literally on fire. And Tony Jaw is kicking the shit out of these guys, kicking the shit out of one fighter, or one of the guys. Not even Kenny. It's on YouTube. Look it up. It is fucking insane. But what's even more fucking insane is how he defeats uh, how he defeats Don. All right, George tries to fight Don. Don throws him off. He gets on his bike. He and he's wearing a helmet. He drives straight towards Ting. Ting dr jumps on the back of a pickup truck. To Right in the truck bed and jumps really high. He is well over fifty. He's got to be around twelve feet in the air at this point, and he knees. He lands a powerful knee right on Don's head, right center in the fucking head. If his helmet, if he wasn't wearing a butt, if he wasn't wearing a helmet, he'd be fucking dead. Yeah, he lands on the helmet. The helmet crack and breaks in half. That is the most insane stunt I've seen in the movie so far. This movie's got a lot of fucking insane stuff. But my God, that one was the most insane. Now, supposedly Don actually dies in the, around this around this point. It's supposedly hinted at, but they don't actually fully say. So, for the sake of argument, I'm going to say, fuck it, he dies. Now, Don actually tells Ting exactly where the boss went to, <laughs> or where the boss actually went to, and he later dies. George actually agree actually wants to help Ting, and he calls himself Humayun at this point on. Uh, Hun Lee at this point on. So, yeah. Uh, so, George... Uh, anyway, George and Ting actually go right to the... Uh, go right to the Buddhist... Uh, go right to the Buddhist cave area where Ting beats the crap out of more guards. And we pretty much get the sequence of Ting... of Tony Jaw fighting a bunch of bad guys. It's an awesome sequence. Like, seriously, these are really cool sequences. No wire work shit whatsoever. It's all pure practical effects and pure martial arts amazingness. It's awesome.
Hell, at some point, he even does the Giver kick. Though, was this maybe before or after uh, so, uh, Undisputed 2 was made? Eh, who gives a flying fuck? It's actually kind of a cool sequence. <laughs> Electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So. Ting makes it to the area where the Buddhist temple head is. Uh, and of course, all the guards start to fight him. Start to actually fight him again. And of course, Ting beats the fuck out of everybody. Uh, beats the fuck out of everybody. Except for Saming and the big boss. George tries to fight one guy. And this guy actually wants up breaking George's... um Breaking George's arm. But Ting beats the fuck out of this guy by breaking the guy's rib cage, like legit breaking the guy's rib cage. Okay, he doesn't actually break the guy's rib cage. He breaks the guy's leg uh, by actually jumping on it, snapping the leg backwards. Like seriously, like he takes the guy's leg where his knee is and snaps the knee upward. <laughs> it's like you break my friend's arm, I break your fucking leg, asshole. <clears throat> so Ting actually has a rematch against Samik. And this time around, Sun Ming's not using steroids, and Sun Ming gets his ass handed to him properly. And so the workers actually go after go after Tang, and Tang beats the living fuck out of all the workers. So, hmm. Yeah, I should mention they actually chiseled the head to the point where they're going to try to remove the Buddhist head. Yeah, so they really chiseled it on the neck area so they can actually try to remove the Buddhist head. Uh, and Tang basically stops them from doing that, while Sun Ming gets. Uh, decides to juice up once again with not one, not two, not three, but five syringes of steroids, jams it into his chest, and hit, and just, you know, just rams that shit in. And he's pretty much on a... He goes on complete roid rage at this point. Uh, however, Ting, with his mastery of the martial arts, is actually... Uses his knees and elbows, using all his knee and elbow techniques, basically fucks up something so badly with point, and actually cracks open his skull with a with a flying elbow technique on top of his head. Well, on top of his head. And then he goes after the big boss, big boss shoots him. And then George beats the living shit out of the big boss with a crowbar. He gets the uh, unboxed head, <clears throat> and something attacks George again, and he is Again, overloading on Roid Rage. Tang continues to fight uh, Saming, and he jumps all. He jumps like ten. He climbs up on the scaffolds, fifteen feet in the air. Does a double knee, lands right in Saming's chest, killing him. Mind you, uh, this is like fifteen feet up in the air. He lands right on his rib cage, crushing his rib cage, and also crushing his heart, killing him instantly. At the, finally, and ending the fight. Good lord. Oh, and what's the big boss do? It's like, so, you really want this fucking head? What am I smashing the pieces, huh? He grabs a, he grabs a freaking hammer. George actually cover, actually covers on box head to protect it, and he gets a huge majority of blows. Like, so, and like, George is already knocking on death's door at this point. And then something kind of crazy happens. The big Buddhist head that he was trying to remove, it gets loose and crushes him. And we see it like played back like four times too. This movie has like has a playback segment, but we where we see different angles. Yeah. We see this guy get killed four times in a row. Like we really wanted to see this guy get killed. Hey, he fucked up. This guy fucked up. If he would have given the head, none of this shit would have happened. Dumbass. Now, George gives Ting on box head, but he actually dies in the process. And Moy and Ting are both saddened by this. But the movie does have a somewhat happy ending, where Ting and where Ting and Moy actually go back to Long Pradu, the village that he, the Ting is, the Ting and George are both from. Now, since George has died, they actually cremated him, and his ashes are brought to the. Are brought into the are brought into the temple to be celebrated upon, you know, to be prayed upon. And on box head is returned, and the movie ends on a somewhat happy ending. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was on box. I finally did on box. And let me tell you something: it is an awesome film. It's a really good film. But for most people who have seen Tony Jaa films, 
there's only one film you were mostly thinking about, wasn't it? Yeah. You're thinking about this one, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. This was my introduction to Tony Jaw. Not this one, but this one. Holy fuck. Am I going to review this one? Not yet. Nope. And you know what? Since Saturday was comic book day, and uh, I'm not going to do anything Star Wars related because, well, uh, Disney owns the franchise, and they pretty much ruined it. So, instead, I'm going to do a comic book movie. But since I just did a Muay Thai film, might as well continue the gravy train and do, uh, oh, here's one. I'm going to do a superhero film from Thailand. Mercury Man. And I got to ask, for those who say this guy looks like a Black Panther, are you high? Uh, seriously. This is Spider-Man. Look, look at his costume design. Let's <laughs> look at him. That's clearly Spider-Man. It's Thai Spider-Man. You guys idiots. Oh, here's a fact. Oh, fun fact. I don't know this is a Thai Spider-Man. Because the movie was made in 2006. And was released in 2009. Join the Spider-Man craze, you morons! Jesus Christ! Idiots! Okay, I'm done. i yeah, cursing you guys out. So, you know what? Tune in tomorrow. We'll take a look at Mercury Man. And at that point, I will be calmed down at that point. So until then, I'll see y'all later. Jerox Frank, 